Welcome to the Bethel Kingdom City Church BKCC Church Without Walls podcast series. This podcast is brought to you by our lead pastor, James Coyote Olusoji. We pray that you will be recharged, reinvigorated, revived, and refreshed as you listen. Please stay connected with the power source, Jesus Christ. Also, connect with us via our website, www.bethelkingdomcitychurch.ca. Or follow BKCC on all our social media platforms via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Stay blessed. Thank you for joining another edition of our podcast series on Church Without Walls. During our meeting edition, we talked about the power of your thoughts. Today, we will be considering the power of your words. Thought and words are interrelated. Because your words are the product of your thought. Luke 6 45, contemporary English version says, Your words shows what is in your heart. You and your words are inseparable. Because the words that come out of your mouth describes the kind of person you are. Luke 6, 45, Good News Translation says, A good person brings good out of the treasure of good things in his heart. A bad person brings bad out of his treasure of bad things. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. From this Bible passage, we realize that what determines whether you are good or bad is what you say with your mouth. What you say with your mouth is a description of what your heart is full of. Your written or spoken words reveal who you are. Whenever a job seeker goes for a job interview, one of the major ways the interviewer will judge the interviewee is by the words he or she speaks as he or she responds to the interviewer's questions. The interviewee speaks from the knowledge of what he has acquired in his heart. And the interviewer will know more about that person based on what he said and based on what he wrote in his resume. Your words describe your personality because you speak what is in your heart. One of the best ways to know a man is to check and examine his words. Your words have the capacity to justify you or condemn you eternally. One of the things that God will judge us for is every idle word that we speak. Matthew 12, 36, New International Version says, But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. One of the ways to recognize a fool is by the way he speaks. And one of the ways to know the wise is through the words that proceed from his mouth. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 3, NIV version says, A dream comes when there are many cares, and many words mark the speech of a fool. Words have the capacity to bring war, and words have the capacity to bring peace. Many words all over the world started with boastful words. And if peace will also be restored in those nations, it will be initiated by soothing words. Proverbs, Proverbs 15.1 says, A soft answer turns away anger, and a hard word arouses wrath. Even the battles that we fight in life is a battle of words. God is constantly speaking to us, and the devil is constantly speaking to The voice we eventually yield to determines whether we will be victorious or be defeated. When the devil was about to set human race against God, it was the words that he spoke to Eve, which Eve absorbed and acted upon that initiated the journey of human downfall. 
Adam also acted upon the words of Eve and ate the forbidden fruit. And the human race found himself in a peculiar mess. Genesis 3 1 says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the feed which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So the ability to know who is speaking to you, whether it's the devil or God, and acting rightly on the words of God could save you from eternal damnation. When God was going to redeem the world from sin, what is sent to the world was the world in a bodily form known as Jesus Christ. 1 John 4, 9 says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here, the Bible says God sent his only Son, Jesus. God sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. John 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. In verse 14 of that John chapter 1, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Christian journey is not complete without the word. We need the word of God to build our faith. When we pray, all we do is to speak or quote the word of God back to him. One of the ways we receive our salvation is by our confession. Romans chapter 10 verse 10 says, Even our faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of God. Even our faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Romans 10 17. When the devil comes to tempt or attack us as Christians, the best way to resist him is by the word of God. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The weapon that Jesus Christ used in resisting the devil when he was tempted in the wilderness was the word of God. If we look at all these points critically, it simply means we cannot do anything without the word, especially the word of God. In 1 Samuel 17, when David fought Goliath, he conquered Goliath by his word before he conquered him physically. Goliath spoke some debilitating words against the nation of Israel and later against David. David responded and he told Goliath exactly what he would do when he killed him. He told him that he would cut off his head. David accomplished everything that he said he would do to Goliath because the words that we speak in faith carry tremendous power. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Just like David did to Goliath, you have to condemn every tongue that rises up in judgment against you. Your words carry so much power. Your words have creative power because you can form your world with your words. Even God created the whole world by his word. Since we are also created in God's image, we need to constantly speak the word of God into every situation and circumstances. And those words have the capacity to become flesh. Flesh can be seen and it can be touched because it is tangible. What that means is that even though your words are intangible, when you speak it, it can become tangible. John 1 verses 1 to 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was 
with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Your words can put you into trouble, and your words can rescue you from trouble. In 1 Samuel 25, Nabal initiated a war by the words that he spoke to King David. King David would have destroyed and decimated Nabal's household because of his words. However, Abigail, Nabal's wife, rescued everyone in the household of Nabal by the gentle words she spoke to David. All the miracles that Jesus did while on earth, he did them by his words. Psalm 107 verse 20 NIV version says, He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. In Mark 10, 46 to 52, the blind Bartimaeus received his sight by the words that Jesus spoke to him. In John 5, 1 to 15, the man with infirmity at the pool of Bethsaida, who had been sick for 38 years, received his healing by the words of Jesus. In John 11, 38 to 44, in John 11, 38 to 44, Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, was brought back to life by the words of Jesus. In John 6, 1 to 14, Jesus fed 5,000 men with five loaves of bread and two small fish. A meal of a small boy became multiplied by the words that Jesus spoke to it. Our words also have the same potent power to do what Jesus did. Jesus said in John 14, 12, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than this, because I am going to the Father. So if Jesus did all these miracles by his spoken words, our words also have tremendous power to perform great signs and wonders. All those who are under curse today are caused by words pronounced upon them. In the same way, all those that are blessed are blessed by the words spoken over them. Your tongue as a Christian has the ability to reverse every negative word spoken against you, according to Isaiah 54, 17. All you need to do is to reverse it by a superior word, which is the word of God. The word of God is superior to any word spoken against you. So just quote it to counter every negative word. Numbers 23, 23 says, Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? The word of God can counter the word of man. If anyone that has authority over you has cost you in the past, you can take the case to the highest authority. The word of God is the highest authority, and no authority is superior to the word of God. In Numbers 22, when Balaam was hired by Balak to curse the Israelites, he was supposed to pronounce some negative words over them. Cursing the Israelites became impossible for him because God also spoke some words to Palam that restricted him from carrying out that ignoble assignment. So just speak the word of God and counter every negative pronouncement against you and it will be settled because Psalm 119 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. As a matter of fact, any, any negative words spoken against you by the enemies can boomerang and their words can become their own reign instead. In Esther chapter 7, Amon boasted that he would impel Mordecai on a pole. The words of prayer offered by Mordecai and all his people saved him and Amon was impaled on that pole instead. Also in the case of Egyptians, Exodus 15, 9-10, New International Version says, 
the enemy boasted, I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Invariably, despite the fact that the Egyptians were boastful, they were the one who perished in the Red Sea. Because God spoke to Moses and the Israelites acted on God's word. The Red Sea opened up for them and they went through in a dry land and the same Red Sea swallowed up their enemies. When Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he did that by speaking some words to him. But Jesus overcame the temptation by quoting the word of God back to Satan. The battle we fight in life is actually the battle of words. You can only win the battle by speaking the word of God. Or you can lose the battle by refusing to speak the word of God. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Proverbs 18.21, New International Version says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Your tongue or your words can determine where you spend your eternity. In Luke 23, 39-43, one of the thieves that was nailed alongside Jesus Christ spoke the right words to Jesus, and he made it to paradise at the dying minute. The second thief could not make it to paradise because he spoke the wrong words. According to the account in 2 Samuel 6, 16-23, Mika, one of David's wife, became barren for a lifetime because she used her tongue wrongly and spoke the wrong words to King David. Your words have the power to shape your destiny and your words also have the capacity to destroy your destiny. You can construct your future with your words and you can also destroy your future with your words. Your salvation depends on your profession. Romans 10, 10 says, it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So, how you use your tongue can determine where you spend your eternity. When God wants to distinguish a man, what happens is that his words will start coming to that man. The distinction between all the great prophets in the Bible and the others was that the word of God came to them. When God starts putting his words in your mouth, he is about to make you great. The distinction between Moses and his siblings, Aaron and Miriam, was the amount of words that came to Moses and the manner at which God spoke to Moses. In Numbers 12, 6 to 8, God said to Miriam and Aaron, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? God said that he was not only speaking to Moses in a dream, but face to face and mouth to mouth. In Acts 9, 1-19, what turned Apostle Paul from a persecutor to a preacher was that the word appeared to him and spoke to him. Jesus Christ is the word of God. It was the word of God that came to Moses in Exodus chapter 3 while he was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, that turned him into another man. The same man that ran away from King Pharaoh was able to confront him after he heard the word of God on Mount Oreb. Abraham received the child of promise by the word of God. People started calling him Abraham, meaning father of many nations, even before he had a child. People constantly prophetically called that name, Abraham, until it became a reality. Today, Abraham is the father of many nations. Also, we need to constantly declare the word of God concerning our situations 
until it becomes a reality. Today, as we round up this podcast, if you have not had an encounter with Jesus, who is the Word of God personified, this will be the right time to do so. You need to profess the Word and say after me, God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner because all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Lord, I know that I am not worthy to be called your son, but by your blood, I have access to the throne of grace and mercy. Please have mercy on me and forgive my sins. As from now on, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept the finished work of my salvation on the cross of Calvary. As from now on, I will no longer yield to my sinful nature, but I will yield to your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. We would like to constantly pray for you and help you with some materials that can help you grow spiritually. Please send an email to neilbart at belterkingdomcitychurch.ca. Also look out for a Bible-believing church where you can constantly be fed by the Word of God. If you are in the city of Calgary and you would like to fellowship with us, please check out our website for our hours of service at www.betherkingdomcitychurch.ca. You can also send an email to info at betterkingdomcitychurch.ca. Thank you and God bless you. If you are already a Christian and you have been blessed by our podcast today, pray for the grace to speak the right words. Pray for the grace to guard your heart with all diligence because you constantly speak what is in your heart. One of the ways to guard your heart is by censoring what you listen to, who you listen to, and what you watch. You also have to be careful about the kind of books you read. Constantly meditate on the Word of God. By doing this, you will make your ways prosperous and have good success, according to Joshua 1.8. Counter every negative word that has been spoken against you with the Word of God. You are your own prophet. Reverse every word that is contrary to the Word of God concerning you. From now on, you should start speaking the right words and you will eventually change your world. Thank you, and see you next time on another edition of Church Without Walls. Thank you for listening to our podcast today. If you have been blessed by this podcast, don't keep this message to yourself. Share the message via all your social media platforms so that more people can be blessed. If you also want to help spread this good news further, you can join our e-promotional team, Online Army for Christ, OA4C, by sending an email to OA4C at BethelKingdomCityChurch.ca. You can be a part of this team from any part of the world. For more updates about BKCC, visit our website at www.BethelKingdomCityChurch.ca and also follow us on all our social media platforms via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Thank you, and God bless you.